Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion, setting forth his sovereignty, and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. Defile himself. 
himself with the sinners. But the scripture says he's undefiled and separate from sinners. He is separate from them because his father was not Adam. His father was different than our father. All of, all of us are from our father Adam. That is where we originate from, is from Adam. But Jesus didn't originate from Adam. His father is God. And he is, he is separate from sinners. That makes him separate. He had no sin about him. We are the sin of Adam, and the sin was passed upon us. And we have all sinned, and we've all come short of glory because of Adam our father. Plunged us into sin. But this man was, was separate from sin. Separate from sin, and he had no sin about him. And he was holy all the way, and undefiled. And, and he always will be. And, and he is... He, he's, he's always been pure. He always will be pure. And so we look to Him, the one that that is the one that can never do any wrong, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And He knows all about those that have gone on. He knows all about them that have fallen asleep. Jesus Himself set the example for us. Uh, we have not yet uh, uh, gone through death, but He set the example for us that it was like lying down and going to sleep and waking up again. Like lying down at night and sleeping and, and waking up again the next morning. Jesus laid his life down. He laid it down, but he didn't leave it there, but he took it up again. He said no man took his life from him. No man had the power to take his life. When they would take him, Jesus just conveyed himself out of, from them, and he just vanished, and he was gone. And they couldn't take him. There's no way they could have taken him. And he, he knew this, and he said, I lay my life down. This is what he came into the world to do, to lay his life down and lay, lay his life down for those that was given, in, given him in the covenant of grace before the foundation of the world. And he said, I have, I have a power to lay my life down and I have power to take it up again. And this is exactly what he did. And they said, show us a sign of these things. And Jesus said, no sign shall be given unto this wicked and adulterous generation except the sign of Jonah. And as Jonah was three days in the belly of a whale, so shall the Son of Man also be three days in the heart of the earth. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what he did. He that was, he that was, uh, was uh, crucified on the cross and was buried in, in the tomb, he's the same one that rose on the third day. Uh, the third morning he came forth, a conquering king, conquering death, hell, and the grave. And he won victory for every child of God because he conquered death. He conquered death. And now we're victorious in him because we're more, as the, as the apostle says, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're more than conquerors. We're victorious in him. That is how it is. We're victorious in him. But the scripture says, the apostle Paul says, it has not yet entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But he says it, but I'm glad that he didn't just leave it there. I'm glad that he didn't just leave it, but he said God hath revealed it unto us by his, uh, by his Son. He has revealed it, these things unto us by Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. And so this is how we know them. This is how we know it. The natural man, the natural man Adam, unless he's been uh, changed, unless he has been born again, it's not entered into his heart the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And you know, and he's got many wonderful things prepared for those that love him. Uh, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And he went away, and we know that he went away because they, they watched him as he uh, ascended, as he uh, went back to his Father in heaven. They watched him as he went up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And, and the angel that stood by said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heavens? This same Jesus that you see going away is going to return again in the same like manner. And so that is what we're looking for. We're looking for him to return again in the same like manner. And, the, and as he comes back the second time, the scripture says it will be without sin unto salvation. The first time he came because of sin. He came because of, uh, of our sins, not because of his own sin, but the next time he will come back without sin unto salvation. And when he comes back, his reward is with him. He's going to bring the, uh, the souls of just men made perfect, going to bring them back and reunite them uh, with the, the, the bodies that are out here that are in the graves. He's going to bring those spirits back and bring them back.
like to reunite them. And there's going to be a getting up morning of some great day. Amen. And what a day that will be when the saints of all ages are going to come forth out of those graves. The graves are going to give them up. They cannot hold them down. Our loved ones that have already uh, died and gone on and, and uh, be waiting for us also that are going to soon follow them. Uh, but yet there is going to be a resurrection day because death is not the end for the children of God. Uh, because there is a greater life after this death here. Uh, we, do, we will just begin to really live uh, when we begin to live in that other world, in the glory world. Uh, we think we have, uh, sometimes we think we have uh, good things here in this world, but I don't believe that the half has been told us yet. Uh, those things that await the children of God, those that love Him and are looking for Him. Uh, those that are looking for His coming again, looking for His second coming. And the question has been asked, are you looking for Him? Are you looking for Him to come back? Yes, we're looking for Him. We're looking for Him to come. And the Scripture said He's coming back after those that are looking for Him. And I believe today that is why you're here. I believe you're here because you're looking for Him to come again. And He that said He would come, He will come. And He will come on time. He will not. He is not going to tarry His coming and, and, and slack in His promises as some men count slackness. The Scripture said that He's not slack, but He will come right on time, just as He said He would. He will return back on time. And when He does, His people are going to see Him. It says, Every eye shall behold Him, and every knee shall bow unto Him, and every tongue shall confess that He is Jesus Christ the Lord. They surely will. And they will know this, because He's going to manifest Himself unto them, and we will know Him. We will see Him and know Him, the One that died for us. Oh, it'll be wonderful. It'll be a glorious time. It surely will. And you know, uh, we uh, sometimes when we're in just in the flesh, you know, we dread death when we're in the flesh. But when we're in the spirit, uh, we we don't dread it at all. We can say we're we're ready and we're willing to go because you can say that in the spirit. And the Lord knows all about this. He knows all about it. But I believe when it comes our time, He will be there with us. I believe He will be right there for us. He will not leave us. We won't have. We won't be alone. He will not forsake us at that time. But He will be there with us when it comes our time to die. We can count on that. And how sweet it is to die in the Lord. Blessed are they that die in the Lord, because they they cease from their suffering and so forth, and they're going to just go and be with the Lord. And they are so blessed of Him to be able to do that. That's our hope today, and that is that is what keeps us going, keeps us going on, everly looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Oh, he's the one. He, it's because of him that we're going to see what heaven looks like. Amen. Because of him. And as Brother Otis said yesterday, the theme of this whole weekend should be because he lives. Because he lives. That's the only way we're going to live is because he yeah. lives. Amen. Amen. Sure is. I'm going to give away to Brother Otis. Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.